Hey everybody, Mr. Hargitai here. Today we're going to keep the lesson fairly short and quick and to the point. So today you will be reading 17 Syllables, a short story by Japanese-American author Hisei Yamamoto. You're not going to be reading the whole story today, you're going to be reading the first half. So that's pages 210 to 216. You're going to stop at where it says her face would not leave. Now this story is actually said to be based largely off of Yamamoto's own personal experiences with her own mother. So keep that in mind as we're doing the reading. So before you jump into it, there are some things you might want to be aware of. First off, the title, 17 syllables. This should set off an alarm bell in your brain right now. Why, you ask? So way back on Friday, you all might remember we studied a new form of poetry for some of you that is known as the haiku. So a quick review of haikus in the form of a haiku. Haiku, a reminder. The haiku is short, just 17 syllables in only three lines. So in case you forgot, you can go ahead and watch that previous video if you need to, but the basic gist is the haiku is three lines, first one's five syllables, second line is seven syllables, and the last line is five syllables again. And in case you're still wondering what's a syllable, remember it's like the unit of sound that you can clap out. So it'd be something like Mr. Hargitai five syllables. I saw some people making the mistake of thinking it was five words, seven words, five words. That's not the case. Words are different than syllables. One word can have many syllables in it. So be aware of that. So given that the title of this short story is 17 syllables, we already have like an immediate hint that, okay, like probably gonna be something about haikus in there. Probably. There are quite a few characters, but right now I only want to focus on four because they're going to be the most important and essential to understanding the story. Our first character is Rosie. She is a young girl. She is Japanese-American living in California. Then we got Tomei Hayashi. That's her mother. Then we got Mr. Hayashi. That's her father, but we never get his like actual first name, so we can just call him Mr. Hayashi for now. Now it's important that we know when we're reading this, this is not Jesus, it is a boy whose name is Jesus. So the Hayashis actually have a farm, and Jesus is the son of a family who helps out around the farm, just kind of uh, gathering the vegetables and daily crop duties. I've got a few guiding questions here. You don't have to answer these, but these are just to help you while you're reading to kind of understand the plot. So first off, does Rosie take interest in the haikus of Tomei? What could Rosie's feelings about the haikus possibly be symbolic of? This is going to be right in the first few pages. How does Rosie react to hearing the haikus of her mother? And what might that be like indicative of in a more symbolic or kind of deeper level? Second, what's the dynamic of Rosie's parents' relationship? Does the relationship seem to be a positive one? So try to look for the interactions between Mr. Hayashi and Mrs. Hayashi. How are they interacting with each other? Are there any subtle hints that we get about anything or any kind of dynamic? And last but not least, how does Rosie feel about Jesus and how do we know? This is where we're going to leave off with the story, so it's a pretty big moment and you should definitely be able to pick up on it. Once you finish that, you answer the questions in the Go Formative and then click Submit. Remember, all work is due by 11.59. If you have any questions, your teachers are there in the Zoom to help you out. So that's it for today. I hope you all enjoy the story and look forward to seeing your responses. Until next time.